Hi, today I will be discussing the neck contouring and the structures and the layers of neck sculpture. The reason I'm doing this video because every other consultation I have is a patient come to me and they give me a picture of a celebrity or a social media influencer and they want their neck to be exactly like them using only liposuction. And then I have to start with them from the anatomy after I do the exam and I tell them if liposuction alone could be enough to produce the result they want and what more could be done. So I'm doing this video so everybody can have some idea of what are the structures and what could be done to improve the neck uh, and the jawline contouring. The platysma muscle is the essential landmark in uh, the anatomy here. It's the muscle that uh, span and curtain the neck and travels all the way to the lower face. Once it goes to the face, we start calling it a smas. And it could meet in the midline partially, inter interdigitate partially or fully or not meet at all. So there's some variation in the anatomy. So if the fat is above the platysma muscle and underneath the skin above the muscle, I can suction that fat which is often the case. 40 to 50% of the population will have the fat only above the platysma. And just the mere suction will produce significant results that will make a huge difference and the patient will be very happy. However, there is some population where the fat could be underneath the platysma or some of it will be underneath the platysma. And if the fat is deep to the platysma, I cannot suction that fat. The only way I can access that fat is via small incision here, a submental area underneath the chin, very well hidden, and then I have to go beyond the muscle and surgically dissect that fat. It's usually very fibrous, and it uh, I have to delineate it of the deep structures, the veins and the muscles and the airways. So blind liposuction is so dangerous. Um, so this is a CAT scan, was taken for something else, but you can see the platysma muscle over here. There's some fat above it. If we suction that fat, there's some improvement in the contour. However, there's more fat underneath the, the muscle, this dark area here. And in order to produce more improvement, we have to go beyond this. This is a patient who had a, a neck lift or a neck deep debulkin that you can see the platysma muscle is here and there's fat above the platysma. However, almost 80 to 90% of the fat or the bulk is below the platysma. So if we do only liposuction on this patient, he will only have a marginal result. Uh, the full result will be after we debulk all the deep structures here, in, including fat and some muscular structure. That I will explain soon. Uh, you can see how beautiful that mento higher angle Became its almost horizontal angle, a right angle with the rest of the neck. Another factor that we started paying attention to in the last decade is the submandibular gland. It's the gland that lives in the floor of the mouth. Its salivary gland produces saliva, and it could become enlarged in some cases and this and goes beyond the jaw and produce a fullness here. I have that fullness myself. But more often, it's not enlarged, however, it descends. It's like migrate down, travels down. We call this in the medical term ptosis, subglandular ptosis. The glands live here within the jawline border. However, due to laxity in the ligament or with aging, uh, the, the gland goes down and produces a kind of a bulge here. And what we do to improve that is we actually inject the gland with some form of epinephrine and lidocaine, and then take that part that goes or descends beyond the jawline. It's very vascular, so we, we use cautery or we use harmonic or bipolar. Uh, Sometimes we sew it, we sew the capsule to prevent any bleeding. And that by itself, along with the fat, produce a, a huge difference in the, in the angulation of the jaw and, and produce very chisel work. Here you will see the digastric muscle, which is a muscle that originates uh, from the chin into the higher bone in the floor of the mouth, and then it have a tendon around 
the hyoid bone here and then travels behind the ear into the mastoid bone. It helps open the jaw and help elevate the bone during swallowing. This muscle could be bulky in some people, like in this patient. Uh, you will see the muscle and this diagram is bulky producing kind of a contour uh, curve here. What we do to correct that is we shave the muscle, the superficial part of the muscle. Uh, it doesn't affect the function, uh, especially if it's been done right. We use either su uh, sutures or we use cautery and we make sure we achieve the maximum homeostasis. Another landmark and important structure is the hyoid bone. It's the bone where the head meets the neck and its location is essential in the neck sculpture. If the hyoid bone is high, like in this diagram, if the hyoid bone is horizontal to the jaw and the chin, the digastric muscle is kind of horizontal, then it's favorable anatomy. All we need to do is clean the superficial and deep fat in the glands and the patient will have a right angulation between the chin, the hyoid, and the neck. If the hyoid bone in this diagram is kind of low, so then the, there's some level of obliqueness into it. The digastric muscle will be oblique, and uh, no matter how much the bulking will, will uh, be done, there was still some level of obliqueness. However, it would be much farther improved from the original state. Back to the platysma, the platysma could also be weak and could be tethered to the skin and it produce what we call platysmal bandings here and there. The way we correct that is what we, what we call platysmoplasty. We release the platysma from the skin and then we sew them back together in the midline. We call this the platysmoplasty. If the platysma is short, we kind of nick the platysma at the higher bone like in here, allow it to relax and curtain uh, the ceiling of the neck here, and then uh, this will give it additional length. Uh, and then finally, what we do is something called platysmal hammock. If the uh, still farther improvement need to be done, we can make an incision behind the ear, dissect the platysma of the deep structure sideways, and we make a small release in this area, like, and then we pull the platysma into the ear and this will further, like in this case, will further improve the curve. So this will give it very chiseled, nice celebrity look. So all those factors are, could be combined to produce a beautiful neck and jawline. So liposuction is a factor, deep fat debulking is a factor, submuscular uh, sub and subglandular resection is a factor, muscle debulking and release is a, uh, is a factor, and then the platysmal hammock is a factor. And also, sometimes skin removal is a factor. And finally, if the chin is recessed, we can add volume into the chin via either fibrous fat, which I prefer, or via chin implants. A lot of surgeons use this routinely. I only add implants in very limited cases. I hope this uh, summarizes some of the factors that we use uh, to improve the neck sculpture. And if you have any question, feel free to call us at 310-230-5911.